What is up everybody? This is Tikoi, also known as Richard. And uh, finally, we got a few games in after the new um, spring patch is what they call it. But I'll, we call it the January patch as well. Um, very, very interesting. Quite different, um, I must say. The gameplay is noticeably changing um, from what the previous strategies was, especially with the Ram Rush and everything. I'm just putting that it out there. I'm not a big fan of the English. They annoy me with uh, their archer rush. I still think that's uh, one of the most OP strategies right now. And um, cavalry are not able to counter that very early. So um, even with the horseman upgrade, I know they did get a plus one range armor upgrade. Um, uh, that that it, 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 it's supposed to help. Uh, in my games, it didn't. <laughs> but yeah, I, I have a game here that I would like to show you guys. Um, Delhi Sultanate is known right now to be a booming faction because of all their upgrades that they got to their uh, research timing being adjusted so well. So let's hop to, into this game. Um, it is Hill and Dell. It's probably one of my favorite maps out there and it does probably favor a French playstyle with a bit more of a defense playstyle. Um, so I'm going to show you a pretty decent French start, how to you know manage your units and uh, what to look out for especially when you're going to play against the Dele Sultanate and when to invest your resources so let's jump into this replay and um, show you exactly what i'm talking about so just to know the Dele Sultanate had a few issues a lot specifically with their research and with their mosques um how they infect uh, infected affected <laughs> the um research time so i'm gonna jump to patrick's perspective here um, the guy I played against so while the game is starting let me just show you what I mean in the tech trees we'll choose the Delhi Sultanate um, this Delhi Sultanate stays many steps ahead of the enemies with great networks of scholars uh, fully realized they field the intimidating war elephants and trample in their path so war elephants is a big part of their strategy it's a very expensive units to train so um, you want to have some form of relics and sacred sites control uh, when you're training those type of units um, so it's 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 more of a mid game to a late game faction in my opinion you know you can always do an early game ram rush or a tower rush and uh, the mongols are known to do that the best but you know their forward fortification is also established fortified settlements using military units that can build palisades so you don't need to just use villagers to build those palisades and that's a very big advantage you know when you have your spearmen out um building your walls and stuff and having that optimal upkeep or um you know resource gathering time with your villagers so it's really really nice to boom with your Delhi Sultanate, especially if you go into a double TC, um, you know, fast castle uh, type of playstyle. You know, if you can get those early defenses, early walls up in a, uh, a map like Hillendale, it should work to their favor. Um, so then the new landmark everybody is also talking about, uh, it is the Dome of Faith. It does give the scholars the discounted um, cost so you can get them out quite quickly and i think there is a research available in them um, that allows them to to um, actually capture sacred sites at level two if i'm not mistaken so they do have a very very um, easy play style to get that a very strong keep and those early upgrades you have the slow burning um, defense to also you know stop raiding um, village fortress to keep uh, acts like a town center including unit production uh, population capacity and technology so really really unique and uh, strong upgrades on their side that you can utilize but let's see how this game plays out it is a french versus uh, the delhi right here i'm just gonna make the ui a little bit cleaner for you guys um they do go for a forward food um specifically because they get 25 percent extra gathering rate you can see the little circles around the the berry bushes when they do build build their mill so they do have this um this specific to their faction is the increased gathering rate from berries so it's always good to get them on berries rather than sheep sheep is not that important for them um i did start with a double scout so if we go to my perspective again you can see my first scout's out this side my second scout's out this side 
um, that's just to make sure as French um, I'm not running around or having to reinvest a lot of early wood into um, farms because if you have a bigger open flat map this forward deer food mm, might seem safe it. but it's very very easy raidable and because it's right next to a go the gold if this was denied um, very early on then I was in a very bad spot early on in this game so please do take your time to analyze um, where you are going to progress through from your feudal age into your castle age so you actually know you know what you're planning on spending your resources on um, I knew right off the bat I had the, the stone production here at the back um, if I could get some early information you can see I'm already pushing forward with my scout I want to kind of see what his early play style because I am not sure if the Delhi can play aggressively in the early game right now um, so I'm scouting out trying to find you know obviously where his entrance is he got a really really good hole here you can see his, I don't know I have two scouts out and I have less sheep than he does he has 10 sheep on that one scout but also you must note um, those first two sheep that I have on the town center, he doesn't necessarily have to, you know, drop them off because um, he's on his berries. So yeah, I think I think it's pretty even on the sheep for this specific game, but um, it does make a big Monday. impact on your game as the French because you have to. If you transition into farms, is a hundred wood per farm. You can see here, uh, sorry, seventy-five wood per farm. Um, it gets very very expensive really quickly if you have to invest a thousand wood um, into farms mid game because you're running out of food and you can't train units so just prioritize your your resources correctly in the early age you want to get up to 11 villagers on food you're still gonna have your three on gold and you know you just keep training your villagers to make sure you have that consistent production of units now you can see the um, school of cavalry going up on my side and then the town center is still producing villagers so there's no downtime so you keep seven villagers on the food you have the four villagers that dropped off the food first and then they started the landmark just so you get that extra give or take 20 or 30 um, resources from those villagers that are building right now technically being idle um, because it takes about a minute and a half to get this landmark up if we jump over to patrick's side again um, you can see he's also going up with the Dome of Faith, like we said, because he wants those early scholars. He wants to get them into the, into these, um, what do you call them? Mosques, I think. Yeah, mosques. So the way the mosques work, if you have three um, scholars in there, they increase or decrease the research time of the buildings in the area so for argument's sake this mosque right here there's a standard set um rate at which these research happens and they cost zero um resources so you can reinvest all of your resources into military which also makes up for the you know very expensive um elephants so your scholars is important get them up so they are going to be gold heavy in the beginning this is a little bit low for him to be on gold right now uh, i would have got, gone off the wood and rather invested this um you know six villagers onto the gold so he does have that ability to get these scholars out because he's only starting to train them now but i guess he's also waiting for the upgrade so he can train them you know 40 percent cheaper it does make sense um he has not walled off or anything on his side on my side we are planning to go with the royal knights so we did get h2 pretty much at the same time um you can see all of those sheep that he gathered uh it's a total of 11 sheep and on my side we have a few carcasses um but still still quite a quite a few um sheep available here four sheep left and you know, my scouts nothing left on the other side so I'm going for the wood here because if we're going to play into Castle Edge, um, I was not trusting the wood walls. I, I'm not a very big fan of Palisades. On bigger maps, yes, um, it is nice to create your own little choke points with them. Um, but for a map like Hill and Dale, 
I'd rather reinvest, you know, into stone very early on. Three villagers is more than enough because if he wanted to rush by now, I'm scouting out to see, you know, is there any military units being produced? Is there any aggression on his side? And you can see from 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 this perspective, there's literally zero military units. Um, he doesn't even have a barracks. So he does go for the um, Palisade walls, 1,500 health on them. And they do take a while to breach to with a few horses or even with a few scouts. You can be very aggressive by training five or six scouts and just, you know, breaching those um, walls down. So you force the enemy into, you know, training a blacksmith and training some spearmen and those type of units that, that he has to invest in that. Um, so I am getting the cavalry out. I was planning on getting the early raid in. Um, the importance of that is it's 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 very difficult with the French right now because there's so much defense on the enemy um, side I guess I would like to try in the near future to do a um, you know cavalry rush with um, you know a tower rush so you use the cavalry as a defense and just you know drop them in the tower they can physically heal in the tower as well if you get the um, chivalry upgrade so they get one health every one second when they're out of combat and i i guess they count as out of combat when they're in the tower so they do heal um because they're not physically fighting it, it, i think that is the way it works but if i had to come in here and drop a tower right right on the corner here it would get vision on these villagers and i would deny this whole wood line of his um if i had to come in here at the bottom this is not good early on if you have three four villagers off of your resources building palisade walls um you know rather send your scout forward and confirm what you're seeing before you you know create idle villagers by building walls this quickly uh, one one villager like what he did here at the back or what he did here in the front that's 100% um, I am starting to raid this wall down because I want to get that early aggression like I said here goes the barracks so with a villager um, the barracks is 150 wood on my side I think it's the same for, for him as well um, yeah standard 150 gold, uh, uh, wood for that uh, barracks um, if the barracks was in the range of a mosque, so if it was built here, then any of these research times would be greatly reduced. Um, he has three in there right now, so this would have been done in about 30 seconds or 25 seconds, um, just because it was in the influence of the mosques, which, is, which it isn't right now. Um, but yeah, just take note of them. They have a very different playstyle to other factions. Uh, Sanctity is the upgrade that I was talking about earlier, where you get the scholars to be able to capture sacred sites, which is one, two, three right here. Um, you can capture them at H2 and have a lot of early aggression. Um, you know, go heavy onto stone, get some castles out. Um, around these sacred sites and just defend them for nine minutes it's a very good strategy if you um, if you have you know less even water maps if you have those key choke points um, it is possible to defend them um, because you're going to get a very strong um, second age you don't have to be third age to get these sacred sites whereas i have to invest another thousand two hundred food six hundred gold and units to counter that so you can literally just defend those castles and play for time and probably get a um, a few sacred type wins if you're playing the Delhi. So from a French perspective, uh, we did try and get that early raid off. We didn't really get it. I have the scout to just kind of see if there's any uh, retaliation or aggression aggression coming off from him. Um, a nice thing uh, what a lot of people do these days is they put a forward tower like just outside the line of sight here from on the enemy side so you can you know have this whole front area covered with vision to know exactly what's coming um i like with hillendale to get these forward towers out so i can actually um you know have vision on these downward hills there i'm going for another raid i thought they were still going to be on the berries which they weren't they actually went over to sheep it is a bit of source of food, but I do pick off one or two villagers here. Um, he did get the upgrade. Um, I'll show you what the upgrade is now. To get that upgrade against the French is a very good call. It's called textiles. It gives you villagers that extra 25 health. 
Um, especially against the Royal Night Rush, you're gonna avoid losing a lot of villagers because the amount of damage that I just did there was equivalent to three villagers. But because he had an upgrade, I only killed one. Um, and it's very, very expensive. I'm losing my first Royal Knight there, that's about 300 resources. And I think uh, the second and third one is going to go down as well because he's already walling up against here so these these units are stuck inside here unfortunately um so we know this and we're slowly transitioning now into a very economic uh, e economic late game um you can see we have 11 villagers on food 10 on gold uh, another eight on food here I'm walled off with stone walls, so there's no opportunity for him to, um, you know, put any aggression onto me. I, I know he's only on a few spearmen. Yes, they can run on my side. You can see the, the knights going down here. Um, but from his perspective, you know, there's, there's zero units that he can use right now for any early aggression because of the spearmen and I'm already aging up so I know I'm in a very safe spot right now and you know that's why I'm saying think ahead of where you want to spend your resources I have six on the stone here to make sure the stone walls can go down um, and I kind of just forgot about them which was kind of a mistake on my side because I noticed my food was running out so now you can see if you can just take into account now it's almost 400 um, wood invested right there for four farms that's going to start trickling in the, this food right um, if you have the opportunity to get your horticulture upgrades um, and your farming upgrades even the wheelbarrow um, in the second age if it's a slow game like this do get those upgrades because the percentage difference is about they say 15% but it's a little bit less it's about 10 to 12% um, from some of the research videos I've seen on people but what I'm doing right now, I have the double archery range, archers count as the, um, the, what do you call it, spearmen on his side, 100%, so that's a good call on my side. But my goal is not archers, my goal, goal is to get these, um, you know, uh, crossbowmen up. I know he has war elephants, I know he has the spearmen, I know he has the free upgrades. So the opportunity for him to amass an army, you know, two or three times bigger than mine is very possible. And at the same time, oof, there are other Actually villagers here. Um, but at the same time, you know, I cannot go and try to fight, you know, even three war elephants uh, with spearmen on them would decimate, you know, five to ten royal knights. Um, so royal knights definitely not the right call. You want to be able to kite them, you want to be able to get some damage off and your crossbowmen um, in the French, they are anti-armor specialists, um, they have extra defense against ranged attacks if he had to go into heavy crossbowmen, um, so you do have that extra defense, and they have the uh, gambesons, I think that's how you pronounce it, it is the extra um, range defense, and this is the best one that you can get, it is a imperial age upgrade, the crossbow st uh, stirrups, but what you also can remember, I, I didn't even use the guild hall in this game, but what you can remember um, to do if you are going into a late game like this and you're expecting a fight to hap happen, uh, your second age landmark is called uh, the Royal Institute, right? And this gives you a specific, not all, but specific upgrades that you can get in the Castle Age that are applicable to the Imperial Age. So for argument's sake, that crossbow stirrups, which is an Imperial Age upgrade, you can already get at the um, Castle Age, plus the gambeson, uh, uh, Gambesons, um, and even something like your um, your Royal Bloodlines, for your cavalry if you had to go into cavalry so choose your upgrades wisely don't waste any resources the uh, enlistment incentives is also a really good upgrade if you get a castle up um, but I'll show you you know in in 14 minutes this whole game has basically been a preparation for probably one all-in fight so I do see he's capturing the sacred site here it's a little bit um, 
how can I say, uh, you know, like a slap in the face if you do it with a relic and there's no opportunity for me to counter because I can't even exit my own wall here. So this was quite funny when I saw it. <laughs> um, only now, because I saw that, I started seeing the army on his side and I was like, okay, I need to plan um, some form of military response here and Im immediately invested in some upgrades. I have one um, of my own monks out so I can actually get one of these relics and deny him one. But he's done a really, really good job as a Delhi Sultanate. Uh, you can see he's protecting the relics with an army so it's very difficult to steal that and he can get a wall of off uh, to convert your units if uh, you misplay. So, just really good to um, get those relics, get those sacred sites as the Delhi Sultanate because you do get a, a, a big gold boost from having that um, relic picked up. You can see on his side he has one right here, a second one right here. He came to fetch a third one which was uh, somewhere around, I think it, I think it was here. Um, and then I just picked up the one back here and the, I didn't see this one in the game um, but there was one all the way back here in the corner as well so I see he's going for the second and sacred site um, and right now I'm getting nervous because I don't know how big his army is so I am denying this I brought one villager forward to see what type of aggression he's gonna you know um, amass from his side if I do go for this um, keep because the keep is going to be able to defend this front here. I also walled off forward here. If this goes into a late game, um, you know, my wood is secure. I have the extra berries. I have building space for any military units. I have extra forward wood line if I need to siege because um, this wood line is starting to, to dwindle. Um, and I'm, I'm not even trading. I could have very easily, you know, moved forward this wall and traded. But I knew there was probably going to be a, a castle age fight breaking up um, because of his aggression towards these sacred sites. So either he's going to push forward and try and get these um, sacred sites defended like, like, like I'm doing right now. Or he's going to try and all in one, with one army, you know, destroy my units and use those war elephants to siege me down. Um, animation cancelling is still a thing. Um, so just be careful of that if you see it, it, it it's reportable, but um, just just don't be that guy. Don't animation cancel, let your units do their thing. Um, it is a bug that they are working on. They said in the February patch coming out, they will fix it. Um, as far as I know, the scouts can't animation cancel anymore. Um, and they are 35% slower when they are actually collecting or gathering any carcasses. So they are really easy to chase down. But uh, yeah, this is pretty nice. We have the 10 crossbowmen up. We have one or two knights just for that forward um, um, defense. But right now I'm just like very um, nervous because I really don't know uh, what type of units you have. You can even see my scholar is not even inside the ring. So I'm not even capturing the sacred site. And that was the goal with the units. Um, so I start going for some form of uh, forward defense bit by bit. Like you see, I got these walls down um, and I have, what is it, seven archery ranges. Um, I'm waiting for the upgrades to come through. Um, I have my blacksmith out. I'm getting those extra, um, you know, attack upgrades on that side. I was thinking of going into Imperial Age. But my food was dwindling, so I had to keep reinvesting oh, yes. into wood. You can see I'm even um, taking these wood lines down to the back. And also, I forgot about my guild hall, but it's already sitting on 1,020 um, gold. And at some point, I'm selling a lot of food and wood. And if you keep selling, your market does become... Um, a bit of a wasteful use um, i mean you you lose 40 percent uh, on food and 30 percent on wood uh 10 percent on stone but if you if you keep doing that it goes almost down to 90 percent um trading so you virtually trade 100 f food for 10 gold um also don't sleep on your siege workshops it is important to get some form of siege out I was very late on the siege, but here I go to keep walling off. Uh, I go for the forward tower so I can have vision across 
um, this this wood line here um, and this villager was going this way to also you know secure some forward defense a single stone wall can be very annoying just because you have to siege through it you have to kind of force the uh, enemy to go into a imperial age playstyle and if we just quickly look at his side um, military production wise he only has the two stables um, two blacksmiths and two siege workshops so yes quite a decent army here um, i think he spots me going for another sacred site here and he's like okay no he has to kind of have some form of aggression um, so i'm gonna play from my perspective because i did not see that i have the wall coming up which was actually a huge advantage um, for the fight that broke out just now but i have the crossbows here you can see it's 16 crossbowmen right now uh, sorry yeah crossbowmen arbitrier i'll get better with the pronunciation there um we have the castles defense to fall back on um it's not like with the english that you get the castle bonus but you get a discounted cost with your training of your units um, so i picked off the scout there and i'm kind of just protecting this villager because i want this wall to go up and with the wall being up and the tower the, the outpost there i see this army and i'm starting to take a bit of free shots at him and you know i'm trying to keep, keep the archers away from any of the units so you auto attack move backwards auto attack move backwards and we've we've auto attacked about 10 20 times and he still has not really you know killed a single unit you just got the wrong map and now we're kind of surrounding him with um, a second batch of uh, crossbowmen. And these war elephants has 1,400 health bars. It's a really, really difficult uh, unit to, to kill. But he loses all of his spearmen. He loses the, the war elephants. And I kind of think he sees, you know, the strength of the units trickling in. A double sacred side secured on our side. And then he decides to take out. Um, so, Castle Age French. I would say it's very, very, very dangerous if you allow them to use their resources, if you're not applying any pressure. Um, but I think for the new Delhi Sultan updates, a lot of people are going to start playing them uh, more these days. So just be careful against them. They are really strong. Um, but I think people are still figuring out what the best build orders are and so forth. But thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and subscribe. And uh, we have a lot of content on the French in this channel showing you how to exactly uh, start your build orders you know what to focus on early on how to get a perfect start like you saw in this game it was a really really good early start uh, to micromanage your villagers properly um, but yeah just keep practicing and looking forward to that rank season starting shortly um, and any bugs that you find please do report them the game is still getting you know smoothed out so it's just going to get better from here um, Ozzy Drongo and a few other streamers that I've seen, they're all getting very, very excited about the state of the game. I personally think it's a very big um, breath of fresh air the way they've developed this strategy game in comparison to like StarCraft 2 and so on. I think it's a very unique, very, um, you know, unanimously welcomed game. And uh, I'm looking forward to making content on it. I think it's going to be a really, really nice year to just uh, get some videos out on this game. So thank you very much for watching and uh, see you guys. In